Council. We have all members present and we're uh, live on YouTube, so I can turn it over to you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this uh, council meeting of the town of Saugeen Shores being held uh, uh, as a special council meeting for the purpose of appointing a new uh, member of council to represent the Southampton Ward. I'd like to welcome all members of council and uh, everyone from our community uh, watching uh, on the live stream this evening. We're glad that you're with us. The second item on the agenda is discloses a pecuniary interest. Ask any member if you have one of those you wish to declare at this time. Seeing none, of course, you can do that anytime you need to. We have no additions, deletions, or amendments. Uh, so that moves on to item four on our agenda, which is the appointment of a Southampton Ward Councillor. And I would just like, uh, before I get into the uh, formal part of the uh, of um, this part of the agenda, uh, just to say uh, uh, on behalf of all of council, uh, how um, pleased we are to have uh, so many people from our community uh, interested in filling the Southampton Ward Councillor seat. I want to say thank you to uh, each and every one of the candidates who are before us uh, this evening. Um, unfortunately, we can only appoint uh, one person uh, from this long list of candidates. Uh, but I just want to say, uh, you know, um, to all those folks who are not successful this evening, I do hope that you will continue your interest in uh, um, municipal government in the town of Saugeen Shores, um, uh, whether that be uh, by seeking elected office uh, or uh, serving on one of our uh, municipalities, committees, or whatever. Uh, your interest is much appreciated by everyone in the community, by this council in particular, and we want you to continue your involvement. So, uh, so thank you all very much. So, uh, number one, item one is the procedure to fill the council vacancy. The Office of Southampton Ward Councillor was declared vacant in accordance with section 2621 of the Municipal Act on September 13, 2021. Council authorized the vacancy to be filled by appointment. Notice was posted inviting interested individuals who are qualified electors of, Sog of Saugeen Shores to submit an application and supporting documentation. The candidates were also asked to submit a personal statement along with providing a written response to prepared questions. During this meeting, candidates will be provided an opportunity to present their opening statement and respond to a question, following which council members will cast their votes by verbally stating the name of the candidate. The candidate receiving more than one half of the votes of the voting members of council will be appointed to fill the vacancy effective upon the passing of the appointment bylaw. Uh, so that moves on to item two, nomination of candidates. And I have a resolution that the following individuals who have signified in writing that they are legally qualified to hold office and consented to accept the office if they are appointed to fill the vacancy be considered for appointment to fill such vacancy. Jenny Amy. David Bradshaw, Carolyn Cunliffe, John Davinsky, Kevin Falsey, Paul Leader, Marcel Legault, Christine Mitchell, Neil Sargenson, and Rachel Stack. This is a mover and seconder for the resolution. Moved by Grace, seconded by Smith. Any questions or comments? All in favor? That's carried. All right, now I'll turn the meeting over to the clerk who will facilitate uh, the presentations and questions of the candidates. The clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So good evening, council and candidates. Um, I'd like to uh, also thank each one of the candidates for their applications and your time and your effort to prepare for this evening. We received 12 applications and two of the uh, applicants have withdrawn. So we will hear from 10 candidates this evening. So each of the candidates will now be provided the opportunity to present their opening comments to council. Each candidate will have two minutes to present their opening comments. A virtual hand will be raised to signal 15 seconds remaining. The second virtual hand will be raised at the two minute mark and I will verbally indicate two minutes if required. If there's anyone who purposely exceeds the two minutes, um, their microphone will be muted. Immediately following the candidate's opening comments, I will ask the candidate one question, and the question has been randomly selected from a list of questions that was pre-circulated to the candidates for their written response. Council have reviewed the candidate's written responses to the questions. So tonight is an opportunity for the candidates to verbally respond to one of the questions. So just to reiterate, candidates will have two minutes to present their opening comment and two minutes to respond to the question. 
The speaking order of the candidates has been randomly selected in the order listed on the agenda. So each candidate is on the Zoom meeting with their cameras off and their microphones off at this time. And I will call upon each candidate um, to turn on your microphone and your camera. So starting us off, our first speaker is Jenny Amy. So if Jenny could turn on her camera and her microphone. Yep. And do we have, a? there we have, oh, thank yes, you. there. That sound, sounds good. So, that's, um, so Jenny, this is, you're our first candidate. So I'm, we're just opening up. When you're ready, you can start your opening comments and we will time you. Thanks. You may thank begin you when much. you're ready. I am, thank you. Mayor Charbonneau, members of council, staff, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself to you. I have submitted my qualifications for the position and I'm sure you've had an opportunity to have a look at those. I've met and worked with a number of you over the years in many capacities as a client, a fellow volunteer, a club member, a business owner, and a community member. My interest in the community in which I live is longstanding with participation in tourism development, streetscaping, downtown business development and support. I've worked in a service club and on the Municipal Heritage Committee and I've spent some time with local food promotion and development. While I have not stepped forward previously in the political sphere, I believe that municipal government is the best place to make a difference for people. If you meet people anywhere, often you're asked, where are you from? And most of us respond with the name of our town. Sogging Shores, the communities of Port Elgin, Sogging Township and Southampton, have been for many a haven and a retreat from the pressures of their daily lives. This is a sentiment expressed by many who stayed with us at our bed and breakfast as guests. This is a calm place with its beautiful features, the lake and the beaches, the tennis club, the golf courses, all the excellent restaurants and shops, and the welcoming small town where folks say hi to you on the street, no matter whether they know you or not. For those of us who live here all year, it's actually an exciting place to be. There's lots of new people arriving. There's growth. There's greater opportunities to experience sports, culture, trails, outdoor op opportunities, and more and more amenities for more interests almost every day. I believe that I am an enthusiastic ambassador for Southampton and Shogging Shores, and it would be a privilege to share that enthusiasm as a member of Shogging Shores Council bringing my expertise and experience to the council chambers and the community. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Over my hand. So Jenny, the question that we've randomly selected for you is, um, and I don't know if you're referring to your notes, but it's gonna be question number four. Okay, I am, thank you. The question is, what are your priorities for development in the Southampton Ward? All right, thank you. Um, I have not put these down in any um, priority way, but there's a, there are a lot of things um, that have been done here and, and a lot more we can do. Um, I know we're talking about cleaning up the beach access points from South Street right through to downtown. Certainly the range light repair scheduling with annual budget maintenance plans and community partners is in front and center. The expansion of the public library building with phased plans is another thing that we've been talking about over a few years. And reviewing and planning for the old town hall maintenance, maybe a new elevator would be nice, and programming plans. Uh, a review of tourism branding and placement of entrance signs at our three entrances. And I think we should move the one from McNabb to South Street or just south of the Southampton Landing um, development somewhere, which we could have a look at. Also, uh, with the streetscape plans, plan scheduling for High Street um, refurbishment after the consultation is completed with uh, the ongoing project. Um, I know Councillor, um, sorry, Deputy Mayor Matheson has spoken to uh, the service clubs in the area about the Jubilee Park uh, development and, and a phased project with partnerships. And I think that's also an excellent idea. Um, certainly, the parking strategy in Southampton is a long-standing discussion. 
um, but also parking for beaches and the core area at Victoria Street, the hospital area, and certainly the rail trail access points would be another um, issue. Um, I recently had a chance to look at the um, opportunities for more uh, electric vehicle charging areas. Um, and I looked at some reports from vehicle manufacturers and sales. And I also had a chance to look at the Nuclear Innovation Institute report, which is available online about, uh, about those opportunities. So those are some of the areas that I see um, are priorities for development in the Southampton Ward. Uh, I think they would take a number of years to complete all of those, but those are some okay. of the issues I see. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. So we'll have Jenny turn her camera and her microphone off and by all means stay on the meeting with us. Yes, our, thank you. Our second speaker is Carolyn Cunliffe. If I can get Carolyn to turn on her camera and audio, thank you. Hello. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so you can, um, you have two minutes to do your opening remarks. All right, thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council for the opportunity to present to you this evening. Uh, so my name is Carolyn Cunliffe. I am a lifelong resident of Saugeen Shores. I grew up in Southampton and I rented in Port Elgin when I returned to the community after my graduate school. And I now live in the South Street Beach area, kind of in between Port Elgin and Southampton. Um, I've been very fortunate to have found a rewarding career in a town that I love, and I'm surrounded by my friends and family who have done the same. And I'm looking forward to this opportunity to represent all those in Shogging Shores who have as well. Um, while I am new to politics, I do have an educational and experience background that I think will serve me quite well. Um, I am a qualified lawyer, though I'm currently non-practicing. And I currently work as a supply chain professional um, and managing a team within my department as well. So I know firsthand kind of the importance of listening and understanding and looking at all sides of an issue, asking questions, and then of course, finding fair, reasoned, and oftentimes creative solutions to problems. Um, I'm seeking appointment as town councillor as it, it's a really unique opportunity, I think, at this point in time to take on a leadership role within our community and provide representation to the diverse people that we have within our town and as well work with town council to find path forwards to the uh, variety of issues that we face. Um, I see this as a, an opportunity to perhaps provide a perspective that is unique to others with respect to challenges we're facing um, with individuals are facing today as well making sure that we're working with every member of this community, whether it's lifelong residents, uh, new ones, uh, visitors, et cetera, um, to make sure that we learn the issues that affect them. Um, at the same time, we have to understand our own privilege as it relates uh, to issues uh, that are raised and make sure, making sure that we're helping to meet their needs and make this community more inclusive and supportive within the parameters that we can. So I know the past few years have been challenging and they certainly will be as we go forward, but I wanna be part of a team that is uh, finding solutions to the problems that we have, um, which could be for our local businesses, including that hiring and retaining workers, uh, residents, which will be finding housing, of course, um, whether it's for low income individuals or retirement ones. Um, I believe that's kind of the last of mine. So I will say thank you very much and uh, thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. So Carolyn, the question that was randomly selected for you, um, and if you're referring to your notes, it's question number five. All right. Okay, so the question is, what do you see as the top three to five priorities council should consider for the 2022 budget? So I see as kind of the top priorities, and of course this would be um, collaboration with council, but some of the priorities that we could consider looking at is increasing the tourism budget um, that we currently uh, have um, in order to make sure that we're providing more resources to our town. So not just looking at um, getting more uh, visitors into Southampton, Port Elgin and surrounding communities in the summer, which I think is quite well known and is through word of mouth, but also looking at our shoulder season. So spring, uh, fall and winter and what activities that we can promote um, to have more visitors into our area. Um, as well, I think looking at kind of the, the recycling budget, um, again, with such an expanding growth of population, we are seeing obviously um, more things being recycled or more garbage going to landfill. So looking at the opportunities of um, what else could we recycle and what does that look like? Of course, that would require just an understanding of the capacities that we currently have within our facilities. Um, as well, I see kind of road maintenance and traffic lights in high traffic areas, that's going to be uh, a Kind of a current and continuing um, issue to make sure that we're prioritizing 
again, especially uh, more cars in the road, whether it be just uh, during the entire year with more residents coming into the area or more visitors as well. Um, and then increasing community services and e-services. So um, kind of was thinking more into recreational opportunities, workshops or um, other kind of just community services that we have, um, as well as what uh, kind of the town can also provide to its residents. And kind of recognizing the culture that we're in in terms of COVID, um, looking at e-services as well to make sure things that are more accessible for those who either have um, a harder time getting to town offices or prefer uh, a method of interacting online. And then um, finally, I think it's important that we consider funding requirements uh, to ensure that the town is meeting its commitments to support housing development with the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as was recently uh, discussed as part of the um, settlement agreement with the SON. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carolyn, you can turn your video and camera off and stay in the meeting. Our next speaker is Paul Leader. Paul, can you turn your camera and video on? Done, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and counselors and staff. Thank you for allowing me the uh, time to talk to you. Quite a few of you don't know me, uh, but I've been in the community for quite a long time. My relatives settled in the community in the early or in the later 1800s, 1860s to be exact. I moved up to Chesapeake Lake in, uh, the, uh, in 1992, 93, and then I moved on to Southampton. And uh, I've been here for the last seven or eight years. So uh, if you've looked at my CV, you've seen my background, you've seen that I've been in the transportation industry for quite a long time. And you've also seen that I worked as a counselor and didn't work, I kind of enjoyed it, but I was a counselor in Waterdown for over, uh, over 10 years. And uh, during that time, was, I was chairman of the Public Works Committee, chairman of the Planning and Development Committee, and I bring a lot of background to the town of Saugeen Shores. Now, I am living in Southampton, the word of Southampton, but I'm speaking on behalf of the, the, the town of Saugeen Shores. And it, when I, I lived in Flamborough and worked in Waterdown, uh, which was a, a suburb of Flamborough. There were like six communities that were amalgamated together. Uh, one of the tasks that we had to deal with was the expansion that's going on right now in Port Elgin, Southampton and Saugeen Shores. So from my point of view, I've already been through it when I went through Flamborough and Waterdown. And they went from a population of 5,000 to a current population of 40,000. And I think kind of that's what's happening with Saugeen Shores. So when John Rich came up and said he was stepping down, I thought it would be a good idea maybe if I threw my hat into the ring, maybe I could bring something to the, to the table that would help the community in terms of uh, dealing with the change that's gonna happen. And if you've looked at the answers- Paul? Yes. Sorry, you reached the two minutes? Whoa, okay. Okay, okay so- Appreciate that. Thank you very much. The question that was randomly selected for you, um, if you're referring to your notes, they're uh, question number five. And the question is, what do you see as the top three to five priorities council should consider for the 2022 budget? Well, I think with the growth that's going on, I think we need to look at either hiring an economic development officer or empowering the current officer that you have in charge to uh, attract commercial real estate to the area. I've talked to a few people that I know in Southampton and Port Elgin that are in the real estate business. And they tell me there really isn't a commercial real estate person in the area. And I think with the growth that's happening in, in, in Saugeen Shores, we need to look at that. And of course, with that comes the chain stores like Costco, Winners, Mark's Work Warehouse, Good Life Gyms, steakhouses to name a few. And I think that that's the next step for us. And I think a lot of people that are moving up from Southern Ontario and coming into the Saugeen Shores area are looking at that and they're willing to pay for it. And they, they, 
they want that to be there. So I think as a counselor, that's what I want to do. And I want, also want to have a voice of people that are in the area. And I, I think I do. I talk to a lot of people that I know and they tell me what their feelings are. And you've probably seen that in some of the other comments to the questions that were asked of me. Okay, thank you. So uh, at this point, I'll get you to turn your camera and, and audio off. And our next speaker is Neil Sargenson. Neil? Welcome, Neil. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Thank you for your consideration being for the vacant council position. Uh, I'd like to just take a moment to thank Linda for all her guidance throughout this process. Linda, thank you very much. You, you made me feel welcome. Um, why do I think I would be uh, ideal for the role of counselor? Well, I have a broad, a broad career background, which includes IT, currently the head of procurement, um, dealings with both public and government businesses in both union and non-union environments. I'm currently serving on the board of directors for the National Clay and Glass Gallery as a member of the Finance Committee. I've been invited recently to be on the board of directors for the Supply Chain Ontario Institution uh, due to my background in team building facility, uh, abilities. Uh, if uh, you were to ask people that know me, they would say I'm a driven individual uh, and view me as a consensus builder. I grew up in an Ontario Hydro household. Uh, my dad represented injured workers at the Bruce for a long time. In short, I understand the importance of the Bruce to soggy shores and also the need to diversify. Um, my bio is online, so I won't bore you with all the career details, but please uh, view my LinkedIn profile if you haven't. Um, I'd like to close by leaving you with the thought that while I'm new to soggy shores, I bring a lot to the table and we'd be very dedicated to giving back to and growing the community. And finally, in the words of Ava, I invite you to take a chance on me. Thank you. So Neil, the question that was randomly selected for you is um, question 1A. So the first part of the uh, first question. And the question is, Soggy and Shores is the fastest growing community in Bruce County. What are some of the challenges facing the community? Thank you very much, Linda. Um, I, I see economic diversity as one of the large challenges. I mean, we are a nuclear community where we we're, we're have uh, well-paid jobs um, outside of the community. The industry is scarce. Uh, I grew up in Burlington. When, when I arrived in Burlington, it was about 18 to 20,000 people. And, and it grew into, over the 40 years, a, a much larger city. So I, I think, you know, the challenge for, for Soggy Shores is to... to um, you know, uh, diversify from an economic point of view. Um, in addition, transportation. I mean, cars right now are, are the main way to commute uh, back and forth. Um, I think we need some uh, uh, transportation throughout the industry, perhaps linking ourselves to other, other parts of, uh, of the uh, peninsula as well. And finally, with all the new builds in, in, the, in the area, I, I believe I heard there's 3,500 new homes uh, being built in the Port Elgin area. Child care is definitely going to be a challenge if it isn't already. So, so growing the child care and finding a solution for that, I think, would be very important uh, to to our future. Thanks, Thank Linda. you. Thank you. So, we'll get Neil to turn off his camera, and the next speaker is Christine Mitchell. Christine, welcome. So, you may begin your opening remarks. Good evening to you all, to the mayor and members of Soggy Shores Council, staff, and the other candidates. My name is Christine Mitchell, and I've been a resident of Soggy Shores for the last six years and been a resident of Bruce County for the last 25. To prepare for the role of Soggy Shores Council, I've read over the minutes of council and the various plans for the town. Now, I don't need to quote these reports. You've either read them, created them, or consulted on their development. I feel my role is to actively participate with the Southampton Ward to represent them in a transparent and collaborative way that continues our growth through respectful dialogue and informed decision-making. Let me tell you what I know for sure. To remain soggy and sore strong together, we must remove they and them and replace it with we and us. I, say, I can say that I'm committed, invested, and eager to work with both council and the ratepayers of Southampton Ward I'm ready to work hard for the town we all love. As the president of my own company for 25 years, I've learned the value of partnership, growth, sustainability, and budget. As a graduate of Wilfrid Laurier University with an honors degree in political science, I'll combine my forces of my education with my life experiences. In my current role as outreach and engagement coordinator for Soggy Shores Chamber of Commerce, 
I've had the pleasure of speaking to and collaborating with small and large business owners in our area. Our members say the Chamber has a new energy, and I hope to bring that to the Council role as well. Whether you're an old timer, a newcomer, a visitor, a nuclear worker, a small business owner, a parent, we're all in this community together. We all want the same thing, to have housing, employment, healthcare, education, recreation. I'm proud to be considered for this opportunity. Together we remain Sogging Shores Strong. Thank you. The question that's randomly been selected for you is, <clears throat> excuse me, is the second part of question one. The question okay. is, Sogging Shores is the fastest growing community in Bruce County. What are some of the opportunities you see for our community? Okay. Well, the greatest natural resource of Sogging Shores is and always has been our shoreline. So I see the great partnerships with investors and development that preserves our beach while creating tourism is going to be paramount to our, to our area. We have to protect the resources that we have and take advantage of every opportunity that comes our way to develop things that will increase us on the map. I always say that Sogging Shores could be the Muskoka of Lake Huron if we market it well and produce it well. Small business, of course, is the backbone on which Sogging Shores was built. And we've gone from the quaint little shoreline community to the fastest growing area in all of Bruce County. In fact, in 2021, the Invest and Plan report uh, said that the largest segment of business in Sogging Shores has one to four employees. We have to create the partnerships, sustainable collaboration with these partners to ensure not only our success, but their accountability to our progress as well. When we work with the business owners as stakeholders to develop long-term sustainability plans for our downtown, we want to keep retail, customer services, and restaurants in those downtown cores. I also see a lot of opportunities in our community for transportation. Whether that means that we're coming up with a system ourselves or looking at it, I think there's a great opportunity for some sort of a ride share program to come into our community. I also would like to see the development developers also working closely with the town to create sustainable housing. We want people to come here. We want them to be housed and healthy and happy. And the only way we're gonna do that is if we create opportunities with our developers to use our resources properly, economically and ecologically. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. I'll get you to turn your camera off. If you're following along on the agenda, number six, um, has withdrawn, so we're going to move to speaker number seven. So we're going to ask John Davinsky to turn his camera and the audio on. Sorry to surprise you, John. No problem. All right. So, John, you may begin when you're ready for two minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Vice Deputy Mayor, Council, uh, fellow candidates and anyone else who happens to be watching tonight. My name is John Davinsky. I've lived in Southampton Ward since I moved to Saugeen Shores in 2005. This past August 31st, I was news director, anchor and reporter for Bayshore Broadcasting's Port Elgin station. I have since retired fully. Um, but I have covered council professionally since 2011. I find that important because I'm familiar with council proceedings and protocols. Also, during my tenure, I, I had a talk show, Sounding Board. And with that show, people called in. They had problems. I tried to solve them. I couldn't solve them uh, all the time. So how do we get someone? We go to the town staff, we go to council members. I've had all of you on at one time or another answering questions for everyone in Saugeen Shores. I've been told by many that when interviewing newsmakers, I ask tough questions if necessary, but always fair. I would bring those skills to the council table as well, asking tough questions when necessary, but fair questions always. In other words, a councillor's job is in a different arena, but the end result is the same as what I was doing in radio. And I would be a fresh face with fresh ideas who's not coming in cold, but I would be open 
to many ideas. So what do we say for this? Well, all candidates are, want to give back to the community, uh, so they're running for this seat. I hope I can do it too, specifically for Southampton Ward, and um, we'll see what happens. And I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, John. The question that's randomly been selected for you is question 1A. So the first part of question one, and that reads, Soggy and Shores is the fastest growing community in Bruce County. What are some of the challenges facing the community? The biggest challenge is Soggy and Shores is the fastest growing community in Bruce County. That's the biggest challenge that faces the community. As we grow rapidly, it's imperative to assure that the development is carefully planned so as to not overtax any infrastructure we have in place. Development charges, of course, will take care of the infrastructure servicing the new build. But there are other things like road use and uh, drinking water, wastewater, existing roadway services that need to be able to handle the extra use at our facilities. So that I feel is the number one. Aesthetically, many believe Saugeen Shores is a unique community and we don't wanna lose that flavor. Unfortunately, sometimes that is lost in growing. Council must keep a close eye on that and they're doing so uh, right now. And a growing and expanding community correctly done means more jobs, shops and services gravitate towards the vacancies to serve the community. And if you have that, then you have a positive place for small industry to set up shop as well. And we've got employment plans at uh, uh, the sports park that will be just perfect for that sort of thing. What does that do? Creates more jobs. All the growth in the tourism industry is uh, dependent on the fact that the town grows carefully. So that's what I see as some of the important and ch challenges that the uh, community faces uh, if we're going to go forward. Thank you. John, we'll get you to turn your camera off and remain in the meeting. Our next speaker is David Bradshaw. David. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk, Mr. Mayor, Councillors. Uh, you're blessed with a rich field of candidates this evening, including local business owners, professionals working full-time in the community, some retirees, and even past Sogging Shores counselors. Um, so why consider David Bradshaw? I have a long history of community involvement, working with council in my previous community as a community organizer and advocate, working with the police services and serving on boards and other community-based volunteer organizations. The opportunity to serve as one of the two Southampton Ward counselors is the next step in a lifetime of community involvement. I think it is important to do the research for any decision. So this week I took the opportunity to speak with Southampton Ward Councillor Cheryl Brace to ask what sort of time commitment this position could entail. What I learned is that it is easy to take 20 or more hours a week to do the research, work with staff, engage with the public, and prepare for and attend committee, council, and county meetings. I realized this is not a full-time paid position, but as the town grows, the demands of councillors is growing. And as a young retiree, with an abundance of energy, time, and applicable skills and experience, I know that I can completely commit to this uh, role. I also learned that this is a particularly open-minded board. Listening to the needs of the community, the variety of ways that those needs can be addressed, and recognizing that almost every decision is to be a balance of priorities and application of resources. This is the way I have worked through my professional and volunteer life. I know that I would be a good fit with the council, committees, staff, and representing the community. I hope you agree. I'm ready to hit the ground running tomorrow morning at the town offices. Thank you for your time. Thank you, David. The question that's been selected for you is question number three in your notes. The question is, over the past few years, Sogging Shores has made some significant investments. Provide your thoughts on community development and capital projects completed in the past few years. Thank you. So over the past few years, what I've seen is that the budget has been heavily spent on infrastructure and development 
community services and facilities. And the double the budget in 2021 has been double that of previous years, uh, with the vast majority being on roads, bridges, culverts, and parks. The investments in Lamont Sports Park and the aquatic facility directly address some of the shortfalls in local amenities as identified in the Getting to Work report delivered to council earlier this year. Um, I think the relatively low use of debentures uh, keeps us well within the allowable ARL, shows responsible fiscal decision making by the town as it stands right now. Uh, important for the town to be putting the foundation in place upon which living, working, and playing in Saugeen Shores can be sustained. Uh, it appears to me that's what is successfully happening. And I, and I hope to be part of the board to, or sorry, part of the council to continue doing that. Thank you, David. I'll have you turn off your camera. Our next speaker, speaker is Kevin Fallacy. Kevin? Welcome, Kevin. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, councillors, and fellow candidates. My name is Kevin Fallacy, local resident of Southampton and candidate for the vacant council seat. While it's difficult to make an impactful impression within two minutes, I trust that all of you have had the opportunity to review my submitted personal statement, along with my additional background information, which has hopefully provided you with good insight into who Kevin is, where I came from, and what skills I bring to the table for this appointed seat. I am motivated to pursue the opportunity to fill this speaking council seat, as these are very exciting times for our town, as we are witnessing expansion and development in many sectors. Known as a dynamic and effective communicator with many successful years in entrepreneurship and corporate management, I feel confident that the relationship building, leadership, negotiating, procurement, and budget development skills I have refined over the course of my career will have a positive impact on our growing town of Saugeen Shores and be a benefit to an already diverse and successful council. At the municipal level of government, people are often elected to office based on name recognition and popularity. Regardless of being elected or appointed, I firmly believe we must strive to select the most capable person with good character to represent the masses and one who has sound judgment and integrity to represent across a range of important decisions. I leave this with you and ask you for your discretion when casting your vote for the person who will fill the vacant council seat. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to a successful conclusion to this appointment process. Thank you, Kevin. And the question randomly selected for you is question number three in your notes. And the question is, over the past few years, Sogging Shorts has made some significant investments. Provide your thoughts on community development and capital projects completed in the past few years. Sogging Shores Asset Management Plan provides a long-term approach to planning maintenance and the eventual renewal of our town's infrastructure. Having a plan for preventative maintenance and timely renewal of our town's assets is critical for our public health and economic development. It also allows us to forecast our capital cost expenditures appropriately. Some of our capital projects are not as visible as others. For instance, the Sogging River Bridge repairs this past summer for which I was able to witness at water level, being a member of the Southampton Yacht Club, while other projects are very visible, as in the beach road reconstruction to replace the water main and services. Other notable completed capital projects include our Southampton water tower refurbishment and the accessibility upgrade to the Albert Street pedestrian crosswalk to be AODA compliant. These are all very important projects that, are, that ensure the longevity and safety of our community. Understanding we are in a fast paced growth period for our town, we must continue to invest in our community's infrastructure so we can sustain the growth of our community. Thank you, Kevin. We'll have you turn off your camera and we'll call upon the next speaker, Marcel Legault. Marcel. Good evening, Marcel. Mr. Mayor. Yep, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thanks. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Marcel Legault, and I'm applying for the vacant Southampton Ward Council position. Uh, three days before Christmas back in 2003, I moved our young family at the time from Sudbury to Port Elgin into a three-bedroom winterized cottage. Uh, this was our seventh move, and I'd been with Loblaw Company since I was 15 years old. I completed a three-year mentorship program in Sudbury, which qualified me for a franchisee. We were building a new store and a new home at the same time, 
This door opened in the spring of 2004. My wife, Debbie, and I were both immersed ourselves in the community at the time. Debbie was a hospital auxiliary volunteer, as well as a member of PASS, the Performing Arts of Soggy and Shores. I joined the chamber and served as a director, as well as joining the Rotary Club. I served in several leadership roles, including youth exchange officer. Over the years, we hosted four exchange, our international exchange students. I became president of the Rotary Club in Port Elgin in 2009 and 2010. In 2010, I ran for Port Elgin Ward Council seat and I was acclaimed. Uh, during my time on council, I served on several committees, including the BIA, the Parks and Trails Planning Advisory Committee, and Doctor Recruitment and Retention. I'm a, still a public representative on the Committee of Adjustments, and I also serve as co-chair co for several years on that committee. I did not run in the 2014 as we were we had just sold our business back to Loblaws at the time. And we were in the process of opening up a new Harvey Swiss Chalet in town. I entered my name onto the 2018 ballot, but then I withdrew it as I realized my father's failing health and operating a still relatively new business was gonna be more of a challenge that I, than I had the time to commit to. We are now in the seventh year of operation and the last two have been challenging, particularly when it comes to staffing. We are beginning to see some positive signs and I'm optimistic about the future. I have a very capable general manager at the store. Marcel? Allows, yes. Uh, you've reached the two minutes if you wanted to wrap up. Or... Yep. Uh, I applied for the so. vacancy because I think that my experience will help council, especially when they're going into the budget season. Thank you. Thanks very much, Marcel. The question that's been selected for you is question number two in your notes. Okay. The question reads, if you received $1 million grant to use for the town in any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? If I received a $1 million grant for town use, I would create a fund and call it the Green Initiatives Fund. I would form a committee made up of representatives from the town, the public and council. The goal of the committee would be to find ways to reduce the, our carbon footprint. Global warming should be our number one priority as global leaders are currently meeting at COP26 and making commitments to reduce carbon emissions in order to slow the negative effects of global warming. What commitments have we made to help reach those national goals? We have witnessed firsthand this summer how extreme weather can bring damage to our community. We should set the example for other communities the committee should bring recommendations to council on investment opportunities, such as green bins for composting food waste. You go to many larger um, centers and they've already had that program in place for several years. And I think there's a lot of food waste ending up in our landfill sites. We're replacing fleet, fleet vehicles with electric or hybrid vehicles. We're create, creating opportunities to install more charging stations around town so that we can entice people to buy electric in the future. We should be looking at investing in net zero homes, uh, providing maybe incentives for builders to build them. And council would approve all the investments and uh, distribute the cash. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marcel. I'll have you turn off your camera and we'll call upon Rachel Stack. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Just thought I had a, a technical glitch. Okay, so good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm really excited to be here. So just by way of quick introduction, I have lived in the area for about nine years, making the decision to make a permanent residence in 2016. While I can't pretend to be a lifelong resident in the community, I can assure you that my focus and attention are squarely on community development and on the interests of the community I've chosen to make my permanent home. I also think it's a testament to the community that there have been so many permanent transplants, such as myself, who have decided to make it our home. In the time allotted, I wanted to highlight some of the key professional and volunteer experiences that I think make me well suited for this role. After graduating from undergraduate, I was fortunate enough to win a spot in an internship at Queen's Park, which allowed me to operate on both sides of the house, so both the Liberals and the Conservatives. And that gave me a real introduction to what politics is really all about, which is really about community engagement and community representation. So I thought that was a really great opportunity for me to learn about kind of 
what it really takes to be a politician. After that internship, I completed a master's degree in political science and returned back to Queen's Park for another year to act as an executive assistant to an MPP. After graduating law school, please don't hold that against me, I, mo I moved here and dove right into volunteer opportunities. So I spent the first two summers in Port Elgin coaching soccer for children ages four to six, which was really just a great opportunity to meet some people in the community. And as a single woman living alone in a new town, it was something to do on a Thursday night. Subsequently, I joined the board of the Women's House serving Gray and Bruce and spent six years there as a board secretary. This was my first introduction in, into the importance of community support, particularly in a more rural region like, like Sogging Shores. When my tenure ended in 2020, I took close to a year off and then joined the United Way where I've been for about five months as a board member. My goal in this process is to really become more engaged in the policy decisions that directly benefit our community, and I'm eager for that opportunity. My perspective on municipal government is, is that it is both the most challenging and most important level of government uh, and has the most direct impact on everyday life. My goals, if successful in this process, is to first build relationships with constituents, and then second is to further enhance the good work and um, awesome opportunities that this community has uh, provided for our residents. Uh, and I look forward to the challenges and opportunities if given, if uh, being successful in this process. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. The question that's randomly selected for you is question 1B. And that question reads, Hogging Shores is the fastest growing community in Bruce County. What are some of the opportunities you see for our community? Sure, thank you. So the first is really just about celebrating multiculturalism. I think as we develop and grow as a community, it's important to recognize some of the positive impacts of that growth. And I think first and foremost, foremost we're seeing a lot more opportunities for or a lot more exposure to um, multicultural communities. And I think there's a great opportunity to do a multicultural fair, which has two opportunities. Uh, two options here. Really, one is to welcome the multicultural members of all the various different ethnic and racial uh, groups that have joined the community over the last 10 or so years uh, and make them feel really welcome. I think that's really important, and particularly as we see sort of a growth and awareness about um, racism and um, a lack of understanding of each other if you're not sort of aligned in the same ethnic community. I think that's a really great opportunity, and it has the next advantage of providing an educational opportunity for our children is to expose them to, you know, all of the, what the world has to offer, both in terms of culture and ethnic backgrounds and sort of how we can all work together. And the second opportunity is to improve access and attainability to housing. So obviously that's a complex issue that municipalities alone can't solve, but there are some opportunities, particularly within the Planning Act um, that has allowed uh, municipalities to work within their bylaw system to encourage, encourage more affordable housing, whether it's auxiliary and coach housing, um, you know, lower level apartments for homes, all those things that just create opportunities for housing, whether it's ownership or renting. You know, as I mentioned in my, uh, in my summary, um, there are a lot of issues with access to staff in the community for small businesses um, when you can't make it affordable to live in the community or where it's a challenge to afford to live in a community if you're making sort of at the 15 to $20 mark. That puts additional strain on our small businesses. So it's definitely an area of opportunity for us to make this community obviously more developed for residents of lower economic status and also provide some support for our businesses. And finally, enhanced tourism efforts. Um, I think, as we all know, we're a big tourist community and there's a lot of dollars to be pulled from those tourists. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to really further work on our ability to draw those tourists and draw those tourism dollars out of their pockets and into our businesses. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. We'll have you turn off your camera and I'll lower my hand. This concludes our presentations. So I would, again, would like to thank each one of the candidates for your presentations and uh, your effort in submitting your questions and responses. So greatly appreciate it. Um, I invite all candidates to remain on the meeting with your camera and videos off. Mr. Mayor, at this time, uh, we're in a position to move forward with the voting agenda item number four. Um, unless you see a need for a break, uh, we will continue with number four. I think uh, Linda will take a short break uh, and council will reconvene at uh, 728. Okay, thank you. We have all members present. I'm gonna commence the meeting again, Mr. Mayor, if that's okay. Okay, so we've reached the point where we have heard from the candidates and we're ready to uh, have council vote. So I'm just gonna do a brief explanation here before we start. Um, so tonight we have seven members of council present tonight. So 
Council members will vote by way of open vote by stating the name of the preferred candidate. The order in which council members vote um, has randomly been selected. And I'll go through that. We're gonna share our screen just to go over the, what the ballot looks like. So um, we have the screen shared there. So across the top um, is the order in which the council members will vote. So Mayor Charbonneau, Councillor Mayette, Deputy Mayor Matheson, Councillor Grace, Councillor Smith, Councillor Carr and Vice Deputy Mayor Mayette. Along the um, left-hand column, we have the names of the candidates. Um, and they're listed alphabetically down the left-hand column. The council members' names are, as I mentioned, are listed across the top. And when I call the council member's name, the member shall state the first and last name of the candidate that they are voting for. And an X will mark the member's vote. The vote will be tallied in the right-hand column under total number of votes. We have seven members voting. The candidate receiving more than half of the votes cast will be appointed. Therefore, the candidate receiving four or more votes will be appointed to fill the vacancy. If a candidate does not receive four or more votes in the first round of voting, the candidates receiving zero votes will be eliminated from the second round of voting. If a candidate does not receive four or more votes in the second round, the candidates receiving zero votes or the least amount of votes will be eliminated from the third round of voting. And in the event that there is a tie for the least amount of votes that are greater than zero, the names of the candidates for the tied for the least amount of votes will be placed in a container. And the name drawn from the container will be eliminated from the next round of voting. So voting will continue until the candidate receives four or more votes. So at this time, if the, are there any questions from the uh, council members and, or have, does anybody have any issues seeing the uh, ballot? Hearing none, I'm going to start the voting and Mayor Charbonneau. Jan Davinsky. Councillor Mayette. Marcel Legault. Deputy Mayor Matheson. John Davinsky. Councillor Grace. David Bradshaw. Councillor Smith. Carolyn Cunliffe. Councillor Carr. Rachel Stack. Vice Deputy Mayor Myatt. John Davinsky. Okay. The voting has been completed for ballot number one. Um, no, no candidate has received four votes or more than four votes. The names receiving zero votes will be um, eliminated from the second round of voting. So that will be Jenny Amy, Kevin Follisay, Paul Leader, Christine Mitchell, and Neil Sargison. So we're gonna stop sharing the screen for the moment and we're going to create the second ballot and um, we'll bring up, we'll share the screen when we're ready. We're going to share the screen. Okay. Everybody can see that. If not, speak up. Um, the ballot is before you. I'm ready to commence the voting. Mayor Charbonneau. John Davinsky. 
Councillor Mayette. Marcel Legault. Deputy Mayor Matheson. John Davinsky. Councillor Grace. John Davinsky. Councillor Smith. Carolyn Conliffe. Councillor Carr. Rachel Stack. Vice Deputy Mayor Myatt. John Davinsky. John Davinsky has received a total of four votes. And I we will be he will be appointed to fill the Southampton Ward Councillor vacancy. I will stop sharing the screen. And I would like to ask John Davinsky to turn his camera on so we can acknowledge John. Congratulations, John. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to turn the meeting over to the mayor at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, so we have, uh, we're going to move on to item five, uh, which is uh, bylaws, and it's uh, uh, bylaw 82 2021 to appoint a Southampton Ward Councillor. And I have a resolution. That bylaw 82 2021 being a bylaw to appoint a member to fill the vacant Southampton Ward Councillor position is hereby read a first, second, and third time and finally passed and sealed this first day of November 2021. Is there a mover and second? Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by the Vice Deputy Mayor. Councillor Smith. Read the section of the bylaw. It will read that John Davinsky be appointed to fill the office of Southampton Ward Councillor for the remainder of the current term of council. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor. That's carried. Congratulations, Councillor Davinsky. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I do want to say uh, on behalf of uh, council. Uh, once again, thank you to all of the candidates who uh, were before us this evening. You all spoke extremely well. Uh, we are uh, extreme. We are very fortunate, very fortunate to have folks like you in our community able to speak so well about our community and was so knowledgeable. And I would just once again encourage every one of you to continue to be in, uh, involved uh, in uh, our community in, in any capacity you can. Uh, just an outstanding group of, of citizens. So thank you very much. Um, and so that moves us then on to the confirmatory bylaw. Uh, and um, I guess I should note too, sorry, I will note that uh, the clerk will arrange for uh, Councillor Davinsky to sign the declaration of office prior to taking his seat on council. Uh, so uh, those steps are uh, yet to be uh, to happen. We can't do them. Normally we would do that uh, right on the scene, but we're not on the scene. So uh, we have to uh, schedule that and get it done. But uh, just for everyone's information about how that will work. Uh, but with that, I'll move us on then to the confirmatory bylaw uh, and it's uh, bylaw 83, 2021. And I have a resolution that bylaw 83, 2021 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council of the town of Soggy and Shores is hereby read a first, second and third time and finally passed and sealed this first day of November, 2021. Is there a mover and second? Moved by Grace, seconded by Smith. All in favor? That's carried. And finally, I have a resolution uh, that this appointment meeting of November 1, 2021, hereby adjourns at 7.37 p.m. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by Carr, seconded by Smith. All in favor? That's carried. Council stands adjourned.